Hi, you're listening to Java with Jen with your host, Jenna Lee Samuel. On this show, I bring the simplicity of hearing God's voice into everyday life in a no-nonsense, authentic, and super practical way. With coffee in hand and real life in our faces, let's do this. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me for another episode here at Java with Jen. I have a new guest with me, Mr. Tim Che, and he is a movie maker. He's a producer, director, a writer. I'm going to let him introduce himself real quick, but he is going to share with us about this new film that he has produced that is going to be coming out in August. And I'm going to let him share all the details, but I'm super excited to have him on here because we love having voices on here, people that are following the Holy Spirit's leading, moving and shaking things and doing it all for the kingdom. So Mr. Tim, it is so great to have you. Oh, great. It's been an honor to be here, uh, Jenna Lee. And I'm actually at Drake University in Des Moines, Iowa, where we were just showing the Firing Squad tra- trailer uh-huh. to about 30,000 people at Rise Fest. Wow. And um, my wife and I both spoke on stage. It was amazing. Four times uh, in front of 30,000. It was an incredible experience to let people know about how important the firing squad is uh, based on a true story of three Christian prisoners who face execution in a third world country, true story, and how they won the entire prison camp to Christ. Wow. And um, very, uh, very inspiring. Um, it's um, we, We've done altar calls after every screening. We've won perhaps thousands of people to Christ already. We're trying to win 1 million souls to Christ here in America first, and then we're going to go out to the entire world. So honor being on your show. Absolutely. Well, I love hearing this. And I actually got to enjoy your film. It was sent to me by uh, your publishing or your company that contracted me out. And the movie was was wonderful. And uh, I just loved it. So what put the firing squad in this? Maybe give a brief synopsis without any spoilers of the storyline for those who are listening who just have no clue what it's about. And uh, and what put it on your radar? What made you make a movie about this? Thanks, Jen Lee, so much. Well, um, the uh, I first learned about this uh, story when I was in Singapore, mm-hmm. and it was about drug dealers who face execution. And the reporter said, they're at perfect peace, Bob, because they found a savior. Mm-hmm. And when I heard that, and of course, the anchor, I think it was CNN Asia, you know, just completely want to get onto the next subject. Yeah. Um, I found out that they were drug dealers, they were Nigerians, Asians, Americans, Australians, and they were trying to shuttle um, kilos of cocaine into China via all these Southeast Asian nations. And you can't do that in Southeast Asia, there's a death penalty. And so um, they found Jesus because of a courageous pastor Mm -hmm. in the third world jail. And they ended up winning the entire prison camp of Christ. They sang Amazing Grace, as you probably saw in the movie, Mm -hmm. on the ending. And um, won everybody to Christ. And so um, uh, I just thought this is the most evangelical film maybe ever made. And um, we're winning lots of people to Christ. And we're, you know, that's the whole purpose is to show their lives and that no one is beyond redemption. You can be a drug dealer, a hooker, anything. Jesus will forgive you of your sins. And um, and of course, repent. Right. <laughs> you can't go on and become a, still a drug dealer. <laughs> right. and repent. But, That's amazing. Um, so, okay. So I am a firm believer that, uh, in fact, I have, I am friends with a movie maker over here. I was in his last film and uh, he actually, actually our mutual connection is the Cristiano brothers. You've worked with the Cristiano brothers. Oh, I love Dave and Rich. Yes. And so in December, um, we actually did a, a little premiere of one of their movies and uh, Tommy Lee Thomas was someone that I got to interview on stage. And so that was pretty beautiful, but I'm a firm believer that true life stories, real life stories make the best movies because you can't make there's no cheese factor because it's just real life it's raw it's gritty and so do you specialize like do you prefer to do real life movies I've seen that you've done some documentaries and other things yeah this is our 16th movie and um we've done two documentaries and very proud of them um but yeah I've done freedom uh, about the early life of John Newton I did David and Goliath I did the islands about a Hawaiian chief as in 1821 who found Jesus. I love true stories. You're absolutely right. I love historical true stories. And um, and the firing squad is our best film ever. Um, and we're going to be on 2,500 theaters generally on August 2nd. 
and um, really praying hard that um, keep us in prayer. That's that's what I ask from, from everybody viewing this. Keep us in prayer. Um, yeah. You know, I was baptized by Chuck Smith 22 years ago at Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. And uh, and um, he said the, the secret sauce to his success at Calvary Chapel was prayer. And he said no one believed him. So, um, yeah, if everyone on your podcast could just keep the firing squad moving in prayer as we get out yeah. 2,500 years, we're in constant attack from the enemy. Okay, well, definitely. Absolutely. So why don't we back up a little bit? What got you into filmmaking in the first place? Is this something you've always loved doing? And and how did the Lord interject himself in your process of movie making? Yeah, I am. Um, I wrote and directed my uh, high school play. Um, for University High School in Los Angeles. It was a public performing high school. And uh, I was born and raised in LA. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, I went to USC Film School, um, which was um, a very prestigious film school, as you might know. And uh, after I graduated, I couldn't get a job. Mm -hmm. I could not get a job. So um, I went back east and um, I went to grad school and did something completely different. I practiced law for a couple of years. And then um, I, I, I was not a good lawyer, so I went back to um, being a filmmaker. Within a year and a half, I set up my first project at Universal and directed it wow. um, for Universal Studios. And then, um, and then I had a spiritual crisis, mm -hmm. and uh, I found God in the Philippines, the Lord Jesus in the Philippines through Gideon's Bible. Mm -hmm. Got on my knees and, um, and accepted the Lord, and that was 23 years ago, and have not looked back. And um, we've, made, uh, we've made a total of 16 movies um, and this is on my 16th film. And so Rich and I, Rich Cristiano and I go back a long ways because he and I were the only Christian filmmakers back wow. in the early uh, 2001, 2002s. Wow. That's so, are your films available on their YouTube channel, Christian Movies? Yeah, uh, actually they're, they're available on uh, my channel. Oh, okay. Uh, which is um, Tim Che Films. They can yeah. search it and they're all free. They're okay. all free. Perfect. I love that. Okay. So why don't you take us into, was there a moment when you, you, cause you had mentioned that your mission is to get in front of a million or to save a million souls in America first and then into the world. And so what put this mission in your heart? What role did the Holy spirit play in leading you into that mission? Well, um, Sue and I, my wife and I have been evangelists from day one and we hand out tracks whenever we're on the road. Um, we hand out tracks when we're in Hawaii where we uh, live a part time, we hand out tracks, you know, Disney World, we hand out tracks, Los Angeles. Um, and I learned to evangelize through um, Calvary Chapel Bible College, where we would evangelize on the streets in LA wow. and Orange County. And um, evangelism is always in my heart. Um, we could be standing in line at a movie theater, and then my wife looks at me and just says, You know, what are we doing watching a movie? Let's go evangelize. So we'll take some tracks. And we'll hit we'll hit whatever shopping mall that is. Just come up to people and just say, "Hey, do you do you know Jesus?" By the way, because um, if you don't, I'd like to share because I I happen to be a former atheist who found Jesus. My wife does the same thing, and um, and so when we make films, it's not to be cool or to be Hollywood. Um, you know, I think I'm the only Christian movie director who actually directed a Hollywood film for a major studio. Wow. So um, I'm not trying to be cool or hip. Uh, you know, um, I'm not into Christian movies because I, I couldn't make it in Hollywood. Um, I, I make Christian movies to bring people to Jesus. It's the only thing. I'm an evangelist first, a filmmaker second. Wow. That's amazing. So I actually was sitting with, we had a missionary in town over the weekend and uh, from he's from Vienna. And we were talking about how a lot of times people think that ministry is in the four walls of the church, but ministry is wherever you are around people and you show up with Jesus. <laughs> That's ministry. Yeah. And so I love I that you're bringing it right into film. Are you connected with Karen Covell of the Hollywood Prayer Network? You know, the Hollywood Prayer Network is so valuable. I, I love how they they keep everybody in, in Hollywood in prayer. And uh, I have nothing but respect for uh, for Karen and all the work that she does. Yes, she's beautiful. She's uh, come on my show a couple times and I got to have lunch with her earlier this year and she's just a precious woman. Um, oh, so wonderful. what, yeah, she really is. Um, so what are, what are some things now? I know that like when Mel Gibson was doing the passion of the Christ and then when Dallas was doing the chosen, which he's still working on, they have lots of stories of like miracles and, and things that went wrong or ways that the enemy attacked that the Lord just stepped in and did miracles. Have you encountered miracles in your movie making process? Oh yeah, without a doubt, we've encountered so many miracles. 
uh, we did a film called Epic Journey mm -hmm. that took us three years to make generally. And um, we did that and uh, it was on Daystar TV primetime and uh, it reached 80 million homes, but we went around the world of over 40 countries and did 27 documented, 29 documented stories in 29 countries of those 40. And um, uh, we saw an African woman on Christmas day have no food. Mm -hmm. And um, she was about ready to quit because she was, she, she was heading an orphanage of 22 orphans in Kenya. And on Christmas day, she had no more food, not even a can of tuna. And then she said, I was gonna quit. I told the Lord, if you don't provide food on this Christmas day, I quit. Right then there was a knock on the door. She opens the door and there's a blonde woman. And she says, are you the head of the orphanage? And she said, yes. And she said, here's 5,000 cash. Merry Christmas to you. What? And, um, and she told me this personally uh, wow. in Kenya. Wow. Um, near Lake Nakuru. So that's when I said, you know, and this just amazing stories. I, there's a Yakuza gang member who, who had his fingers cut off uh -huh. a Yakuza in Tokyo. He's now a pastor wow. and he found Jesus um, in the hospital. And, um, and he read through the Buddhist meditations, the Hindu Veda, the Bhagavad Gita and the Bible. And he picked the Bible as, wow. after he read all of them. And now he's a pastor in Japan. Wow. Uh, so um, there are so many miracles and it's not a question of whether these miracles exist, whether they're true. Mm -hmm. It is a question of after they see these miracles unfold, why do we continue to complain about rush hour traffic, <laughs> about all the politics that's going on in this world? You've seen the yeah. Red Sea part mm -hmm. and I'm the most guilty of them all generally. I'm the one who's complaining that there's no garlic, there's no leak, there's no, you know, rush hour traffic and, you know, and, and, and how could this person have such a low IQ? I mean, seriously, God's not happy with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're seeing this too much in America where mm -hmm. we're so competitive. We're number one. We wanted this and that. We're the most popular, the best selling author, the, you know, and, and we just came from, you know, all these, you know, and it's, it's, it's too much popularity it's a popularity contest and it should not be that case in yeah. in the body of christ um but um i'm guilty of it as well you know we yeah. all want to be number one we all want to be throughout the box office yeah. and it can't it has to be uh the holy spirit is driving it mm -hmm. you know and as i told that thirty thousand crowd at rise fest you know um, we're competing with um deadpool mm -hmm. And um, I said, you know what, Deadpool can make $500 million. I don't care. But if we win one person to Christ, we've won. Yeah. And then the whole crowd erupted in a huge applause. And I didn't yeah. say that with Holy Spirit saying it, but also convicting me mm -hmm. that I can't be so competitive that I'm competing with Deadpool, the secular, you know, Marvel movie. Who cares about that? Yeah. You know, the Lord might be coming soon. That's true. And um, the work that we do for him is all that counts because Hebrews 6.10 says, God will not forget your work. He's not unjust. And I don't think work generally is working at Taco Bell or a nine to five job. I think work is a great commission mm -hmm. and he will not forget your work. He's not forgotten uh, my work and Sue's work and your work mm -hmm. um, as we proclaim the name and, and share the gospel to the entire world, yeah. um, to every creature. Um, and so um, Charles Spurgeon says, if I don't share the gospel with a person after speaking to them 10 minutes, he said, shame on me. And so mm -hmm. I'm on a plane. I've got to share the gospel, man, burns within me. Wow. And um, finally, these movie critics, you, you know, these Christians, so-called pseudo-Christian movie critics, you know, yeah. they, they write, oh, the acting is so bad and the special effects. And they, they do this in every single movie. Uh -huh. And then you realize, you know what? These guys might not even be Christian because Paul says, woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. And then he also says, I didn't come in eloquence to share the gospel. Moses was a stutter. Paul says, I wasn't eloquent mm -hmm. in sharing, but he says, I didn't come to you in that kind of eloquent fashion. Yeah. And, and all these people saying, oh, this movie is so Bible thumping, you know, go to hell. You know what? It's a straw man. Generally, there is no Bible Christian movie. That's a Bible thumping movie. And, mm -hmm. and then I found out that one of, one of these guys was not even a Christian and he worked for Christianity today. Wow. And um, you know, it, I mean, it, it's insane how the devil is just going into all of these different areas to try to take you down. And an enemy is coming from within. It's coming from within the body of Christ, just like it was with Hudson Taylor, just like it was with C.S. Lewis. They've all documented yeah. that they were betrayed by pseudo lukewarm Christians. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that's why, you know, I apologize, but that's why, um, you know, I'm passionate yeah. about uh, sharing the gospel. 
Yeah, as you must be. So what are some of the things I know that when we are walking in obedience to the Holy Spirit, just like you've just described, there will be critics, there will be opposition, there will be uh, hurdles, there will be things that will come up to try to stop the work that you're doing. Um, what have you seen the Lord do? Maybe a story from your own experience or a film you've been on that that you've been filming that you saw the Lord step in and like shift things and so that you could complete the project. I would say even this. This latest one, the firing squad, you know, what was so amazing uh -huh. was we were planning to film this in Thailand at a third world prison camp where these oh, guys wow. you know, were based out of. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and my wife said, no, I believe it's going to be a prison here in the U.S. And I said, I don't think so, sweetie. There, there's, you know, the ones in Chicago uh -huh. where, where it look like, you know, look like the old Al Capone prison <laughs> that won't that won't double for a third world prison camp. Uh -huh. And lo and behold, you know, about, you know, a few days before we were going to make our decision to fly to Thailand and getting the crew and cast that would have been mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of dollars over budget, maybe yeah. a million, two million over budget. Wow. Guess what? We found an abandoned prison, never filmed before, and it wow. just was abandoned. Wow. That's incredible. And, and the most incredible thing, generally, it's an hour and a half south of where my wife and I live. Perfect. <laughs> So the Lord is so good. He cares about those details and he will okay. help you make the mission happen. Like that's what I'm hearing from what you're saying. It's like when you're walking in obedience, it's God's job to help make it happen and cross those barriers that you can't cross on your own. And so that's incredible. So what would you say? I, I, I know that I have a lot of Christian audience that's listening. Maybe they've seen Christian films. What are two of the most common myths that people believe about movies and making films, particularly maybe within the Christian industry or the Christian film industry? I think um, I think uh, one of the biggest myths is that um, you can't do it. <laughs> you, know, you can't do it and, and that you're going to be mocked for your effort because they see all these Christian, again, pseudo lukewarm. I don't even know if they're true Christians criticizing film after film. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And they've never lifted a camera in their life. They've never lifted a camera in their life. And so don't be, don't be terrorized or scared mm -hmm. of these punks because, um, um, because, you know, you just pray for them, yeah. you know, but um, I think you have to be bold. You have to be bold and um, get over the fear factor that I see so many, as I speak around the world, so many Christian film students, they come think, oh, I, I just don't know. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to make a Christian film and, you know, and then everyone attacks me and the acting and all this stuff. I'm just like, listen, brother, you need to read the Bible. Paul <laughs> says, I didn't come in eloquence to share the gospel. Yeah. And he says, if, if, if I don't share the gospel, it burns within me. Mm -hmm. And so they go, oh, because I don't want to offend somebody. The gospel is offensive. Mm -hmm. you know, the gospel, the, this, this is coming from the Bible. Yeah. Who, and who cares? The, the Lord says, don't fear man, fear me. Yeah. And so why would I fear somebody who's never lifted a camera? Mm -hmm. Why would I fear somebody like that? And, you know, I, I, you know, I went to Harvard, I'm a lawyer as well, but why would I fear somebody who, who was just out to get us? You know, so some, some guy who's never picked up a camera. I, I, I you know, I, I have zero fear of these people, but they're out there. They hate my guts. You know, they're racist. They don't like Asian Americans, all this crap I have to deal mm -hmm. with. So, you know, I, I just have to love on them. Generally it's, it's hard. It's, yeah. it's hard. I, I'm, I'm like you, you know, like, like my women friends, they, they feel like, oh, I, I'm in the wrong gender. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know why you have all these bigoted men who, mm -hmm. who, who, who say they're Christians and are polite to women, but they don't want, they, they don't want a the woman basketball player, a woman filmmaker. So I, I deal with gen, gender issues like that, you know, with wow. our age issues, you know, somebody's 70 and, and the, and these, these guys are making films in their twenties. doesn't matter what age you are. And, and so I think the fear factor of dealing with these people, mm -hmm. don't, don't fear them. Don't fear man. Uh, um, we've made 16 movies wow. and every single time we've been abused, attacked, persecuted mm -hmm. by all these, these pseudo Christians. I, 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 I wish I would be attacked more by atheists generally, but they, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I, I can speak to that. <laughs> yeah. The ones who attack me the most are these, are these, you know, are these bigoted, you know, these guys from, from these bigoted, you know, and it's, it's like, it's okay. You know, I, I have to learn to love them. So I'm a work in progress generally, even though sure. I, I'm a Christian for 23 years, yeah. you, you know, I have to learn to love these, these guys who, who are just polite 
people, you know, and, and, but they, they attack you in every which way, but, but loose. Yeah. And um, so I would say if you're a woman, you know, you're going to meet, meet a bunch of male chauvinists, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, whatever you, you, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter if you're Caucasian, you'll, you'll meet BLM people who don't like you. Yeah. It, it, we're all subject to discrimination. It, it's true. just endless, but that's you true. know, um, you just have to love on them and can't fear um, and that's coming from a guy who's done 16 movies and my wife has, I love her very much. Well, we can't fear the lukewarm Christian. That's yeah. my biggest enemy. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's, that actually hits. <laughs> you can't fear the lukewarm Christian because you're right. When you're dealing with lukewarm Christians that are coming after you, you're actually dealing with a religious spirit and that's what you're fighting. And that religious spirit is vicious. I've experienced that as a pastor and as a woman in ministry, I've experienced that as sure. well. So you said that you were an atheist before. Um, what what was the point of your conversion? Now you're a radical evangelist consumed with the desire to reach people. What took you from, from atheism? What was your moment of conversion? Well, you know, I worked, um, as I told you, I couldn't get a job um, after USC film school. So I went to, uh, I did a JD MBA and wow. uh, I went to Harvard and I worked for the largest um, litigation law firm in LA. Wow. And, and wow. we were, um, you know, I was on my way to becoming partner, mm-hmm. but um, I had a very bad gambling problem generally. Mm. So, um, you know, uh, they fired me because wow. I would leave, you know, constantly from LA to Las Vegas, coming back with bloodshot eyes. Oh. And, um, and so after I got fired, um, I, I took some time off. And uh, I decided to come back and make a film. So then within a year and a half, I got a film project set up at Universal Studios through the strength of my script. Uh And uh, it was picked out of, you know, thousands. I later found out. Wow. And it was so strong. They wanted me to direct, even though I've never directed before in my life. You know, even at USC Films, but my project was not accepted by the committee. So after I directed the film, I went to the Philippines to to sort of party because it's kind of the party capital of Asia. And um, I lost all of my um, my director's salary in one night of blackjack. Mm. Generally, went back to my hotel room. I almost had a breakdown. Wow. In fact, I did have a breakdown, oh. and I was almost suicidal. And then I reached for Gideon's Bible, and I read the questions in the front: Who are you? Where are you going? Who is mm. Jesus? Is he the Son of God? You know, is he a liar, lunatic? You know, telling the truth. Mm. Got on my knees, and I accepted Jesus Christ. And I didn't take any medication. You know, nothing. And the Lord healed me. And uh, um, at that early stage, I went to Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. I went every night. Wow. And Pastor Chuck had a Bible study going on every single night, mm. every, a church service every night, Calvary Chapel Bible College. Now churches, they, you know, only 3% have a Sunday evening service. Only 3%. Yeah. Back then, maybe 70% had a Sunday evening service. Now, now my wife and I, we can't even find a church service on a Tuesday. It's Sunday, sir, Sunday morning, 9, 30, and 11, and then Wednesday evening at the most. Uh-huh. And then there's no other church services on these churches all around the country. Wow. And uh, so it's very hard to find a church anywhere. Even here, here in Iowa, I thought there would be more churches, but they're all same thing. 9.30, and then they show a picture of the beautiful lobby, have coffee, you know, cookies, donuts. And then and then their next service is maybe Wednesday night at the most. Mm-hmm. Thank God I went to the right church when I first got saved. Mm-hmm. And I was able to go to church every single night. And it healed me. And within a year, I was I was back on my feet again. Wow. Um, but that's something that Christian film critics don't understand it is, is what, you know, a, a person goes through mm-hmm. to become a Christian filmmaker and be ridiculed. Um, and truthfully, I, we have been ridiculed by the secular media, of course. Sure. You know, so. Wow. So what would you say to those who are listening? And I know you've got to get to your flight. So we are going to keep this briefer for your sake. But uh, for anyone who's listening, let's say whether they feel called to film or they feel called to anything that feels bigger than than they are. And they're dealing with all these hurdles. They're dealing with all these barriers and all of these discouragements that make them feel like they can't achieve what God has put in their heart. What would you tell that person if they were standing in front of you? Well, uh, first off, uh, generally, one thing I, I notice is on the book of Proverbs, it's all about laziness and diligence. Mm-hmm. You know, the entire book, you know, lazy person, vinegar to your eye, um, you know, uh, the yeah. diligent become rich, the lazy become poor. And I would say to these people, you know, uh, are you really and truly diligent? Because if you, you can't be watching Netflix and trying to succeed at night, you can't. You should be going out to church or taking a night class in film mm-hmm. or 
even just going around to community centers, asking filmmakers, can I volunteer to be on your set? But you cannot, I, my wife and I, we don't have a Netflix. I'm not, by the way, I'm not judging those who have Netflix. I don't care. <laughs> I but I'm just saying, you can't be, you can't be watching Netflix and hoping to succeed. You can't. I mean, it's, you're, that's my diligence, but maybe, maybe, you know, you know, people always see that's sort of like a Kobe Bryant world-class diligence, but I don't think so. I, I think, I think, I think if you, um, I, I think if you're, if you're, if you're watching two hours of TV a night, to me, that's not diligent and, and you won't, you won't achieve your dreams if you're doing that. You've got to, you've got to sacrifice. And so if you want to be a filmmaker or a podcaster, like you or whatever, and try to build an audience, mm -hmm. that takes work. It does. And, you know, that takes, I mean, you know, 14 hour days. And if you can't put that in, then, you know, maybe God is calling you just to be a nine to five person. I don't know. But film filmmaking is really, really, really tough. Yeah. Yeah. And no doubt it takes it takes hard work. And I feel like no matter where someone finds themselves, like most of my audience probably won't be filmmakers, but their moms who are raising kids who have special needs or their, you know, grandparents who are raising their grandchildren because something went awry in the in when their kids lives, you know, or, you know, they work the nine to five or they are an entrepreneur or whatever it is. I think every mountain that we have to climb or every calling that we have has mountains that we have to climb. And you're right. The principle of diligence is a like faith without works is dead. If you believe for the vision, but you don't put in the work, do you really believe for the vision? And so that's what I hear you saying and what you just said. So if you, you're working on the firing squad, let's go back to that. And then we're going to go ahead and let you go. But um, are there other projects that you're working on beyond the firing squad? And then how can people come in and support you, the work that you're doing with the firing squad? Oh, thank you, generally so much. And by the way, it's been great being on your show. Thank you. Um, a good friend of my wife and I is Nick Belugic, and he has no limbs. He has no arms, and he has yes. no, no I know legs. of him. Yeah. You know him? Okay, great. I do. And uh, Nick is actually doing a promo for us. But you can Google Nick Belugic, the Firing Squad movie, and okay. he's all over Fox News. Um, but when I see him and I see his diligence, it's, I mean, he's the world's number one speaker. Wow. And when I see him on that table and then after, because I speak at the same conference with him. So we both speak. And so I see him backstage all the time. He's been such a good friend. And he oh. just did a, a promo video for the firing squad. Just the most amazing, courageous man. He's so tired. Mm. Um, and uh, after he speaks so long, and then he still helps me out, oh. you know, and, and so encouraging. Um, and he is the most diligent guy I know, you know, I mean, this guy, I see him everywhere, all the Christian conferences, festivals. I mean, he is nonstop um, and he has no arms, no legs. Wow. And yet he was able to have children. He was able to surf with no, no arms, no legs. He's able to be married, be the world's number one motivational speaker. I think God is using him in amazing ways in amazing ways. Um, but uh, going back to the firing squad, yeah, it comes out nationwide August 2nd. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we can be number two. Um, my other friends who are who are on our team think we can be number one and wow. beat even Deadpool second weekend. Um, but that's all in God's hands. You know, I can't. Um, uh, I've seen visions from God on this movie. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, my wife has as well. And um, so we really, really um, uh, see God's hand on this film to win many, many people to Christ in America. Mm -hmm. And the NRS, uh, um, National mm -hmm. Religious Services, um, they said that Christianity is the fastest declining mm -hmm. religion um, in, in, in America of all countries, of all, we're the fastest um, declining Christian Christian and Christian faith in the world. All other countries are increasing in Christianity, but we're decreasing. China's increasing. India's yeah. increasing. Yeah. And they're sending missionaries to America, believe it or not. Wow. It's that bad. My wife and I were in Fiji on our way to Australia. And um, and the Fijian pastor said, no, uh, Fiji is 100% Christian. We're sending missionaries from Fiji to America to help you out. And so wow. short term, a great short term mission is just go to L.A., you know, go to New York City, go, you know, don't be afraid, God will be with you. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're, they're all doing that Florida thing going in the Alamo kind of mentality. Let me go to Texas, let me go to Florida. Yeah. Let, me, let me escape these instead of going there and winning people to Jesus. Mm. It's, it's a ripe mission field, Chicago, San Francisco, Portland, 
ripe mission fields and we're going, oh no, I'd rather go to Africa yeah. and everybody is saved in Africa. <laughs> uh, even North Korea, you know, the, the, you know, they, it was, you know, it was, uh, my grandfather was a pastor in North Korea, believe it or not. Wow. wow. Um, and, and barely escaped before being killed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, you know, it, it didn't touch on me, obviously, uh, you know, at, at an earlier age, but um, so, yeah, it, you know, it's going out into all the world and um, we want to win a million people to Christ um and uh and so that's the most important i have to check my motives too generally because you know i'm so competitive that <laughs> i want number one number two i want to show these guys and it's not competitive for me i don't want any glory at my age i'm in my 50s but um you know we were going to retire after this but i get competitive against hollywood because i don't mm -hmm. like them you know i don't like the people in hollywood i don't i you know they they, they disgust me mm -hmm. but i have to love them because jesus commanded me to love my neighbor yeah and love my enemies so yeah. that's a, it's a it's a hard struggle generally I'm, I'm a work in progress i'm not <laughs> perfect by any means. i wake up in the morning and i say lord i want to be loving kind gentle patient self-control not irritable not only i want to show the fruits of the spirit today yeah. and uh, you, you fail in that area but um but a transgression is something the lord does not like if you woke up and you mm -hmm. said to the lord I'm going to get angry. I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be um, impatient. I'm going to, that's a, a transgression because you're, you know, you're going to sin. And so that's why he held David to such a, um, a hard standard when he committed adultery, because he knew what he's going to do. He's yeah. going to get up and he's going to commit adultery. Mm -hmm. And that's a transgression against the Lord. But um, I'm a work in progress in terms of, you know, my patience. And, uh, you know, I, I get a little irritated at people who are not as bright and smart, not that I'm not, not that I'm smart at all, at all, but you 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 don't understand what people who don't get it, you know. Like like even today at, at here at this university, you know, we were talking to somebody who didn't get it. They were saying the lunch hour is on is on the the wall, and I said, yeah, but online it's not, and, and we're we're just doing business here at Drake. So we just have, he goes, sir, the lunch hours are on the wall. Oh God, it's very low IQ. To Aww. not understand it. And you just, you get really upset. And then my wife pulls me aside and says, yeah, that's why he works there. You know, he, he, you know, if he were, if he were more intelligent, he would be Aww. a film director like you, but I, I can't, I have to be more patient and uh, more kind. I represent the Lord and mm -hmm. I have a crew of over 300 and extras. And, um, you know, sometimes yeah. I get a little impatient with them on the set and, um, you know, and I don't want to sin. I don't want to misrepresent Jesus. Yeah. And it's hard generally it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. So what I hear you saying is pray for Tim, <laughs> pray for Tim <laughs> in this project, pray for Tim and all of this, but pray for yeah. the movie. That's what I hear too, is pray for the movie because I don't believe it's just Tim's ambitions that you want to reach a million souls with this movie. That sounds like something that God would put in your heart because it's larger than one person. That's a big mission. That's right. You know, and the Philippians is so, is so important. Get rid of all selfish ambition. Get rid of it because we we can be. I, I, I truthfully believe I'm also a grandparent to a, a three grandchildren. But at my age, we weren't planning to um, we weren't planning to um, make another movie. Uh -huh. You know, and this might be my final movie, but uh, we weren't planning to. So I, I don't believe it's selfish ambition, but it, it can be an idol. It can be um, where you don't have the fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. you, you know, and and also you, you lack love which a lot of my Calvinist friends do. I'm not Calvinist, by the way. But <laughs> a lot of my Calvinist friends, you know, the, the predestination and, you know, but the, the, there's, there's, I'm, I'm not Armenian either. Uh, I'm more of a midway, but uh, I, you, you, you have to love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do that generally. It's very hard to love your neighbor and love those around you. And, and it's indicative of possibly the end times when everyone will be offended. The love of many will grow cold. So my theology as a Calvary Chapel guy is my eschatological beliefs are, mm -hmm. I think we are possibly in the end times. I think the Lord might be coming sooner than we think. Mm -hmm. And so it makes me more grounded that um, if the Lord is coming sooner than we think, I want to be have a more urgent, compelling need. Yeah. The first Thessalonians says we can't be ignorant of the times we're in, meaning we can't be ignorant of the end times. Mm -hmm. We can't take like my good friend who's a very well-known celebrity says, Tim, I'm pan millennialist. And I said, what does pan millennialist mean? He goes, everything will pan out. <laughs> and I can't take that, you know, as an eschological guy who's studied theology for 23 years. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'm more 
uh, into you know um, the possibility. So in other words, if you don't believe we're in the end times, tell me why. Mm -hmm. You know, and then if you do believe we're in the end times, tell me why. Yeah. So either way, I, I'm not dogmatic because I have a lot of friends who don't believe we're in the end times. Yeah. So I can't be dogmatic. And I and they have yeah. some valid reasons on it. Yeah. Well, let me encourage you with something in that in the Bible, when the boy with the loaves and the fishes came that day to listen to Jesus speak, when he brought his loaves and fishes, he wasn't planning that day to go feed a multitude. He just showed up taking care of himself. And then when Jesus asked, he just brought what was in his hands and it was Jesus's responsibility to multiply the loaves Amen. and fishes and feed the multitude. And I believe that's what you're doing with this movie. You're showing up with your loaves and fishes. You have put every ounce of yourself in it and probably more. And then now we're going to trust the Lord to take what you've put in and multiply it and feed the multitude. And you're really just coming in agreement with his mission for you, which is to reach a million souls with this movie. And so we can rest in that. God is so faithful to the things that he puts in front of us. And so I would encourage you with that. And so what uh, what website can we point listeners to if they want to share your movie online? And then I'll let you go. Oh, a million souls org. Millionsouls.org. And there you can, we have, a, a, I think, over almost close to 160, 170,000 now. Wow, that's we're, incredible. We're bringing it. So, yeah, well, we want to we want to win as many people to Jesus as we can. And, wow. um, you know, um, I love America generally. And my dad served in the military in, mm. in the U.S. And he loved America. And it's a great, greatest country in the world. As my friend, Pastor Greg Laurie, told me, and he was in one of my films, the mm. earlier films. And he told me, you know what, you know, we owe it to our founding fathers who, who did so much and, and made our country so great through evangelism mm -hmm. to evangelize to their grand, their grandchildren and great grandchildren. Because my wife and I, when we go to the mall, wherever and hand out to 18 to 25 year olds, they are all atheists. Generally, wow. they are all atheists. And maybe that's not the case in Texas or Florida, but in L.A., New York City, Hawaii, yeah. Waikiki Beach they are all atheists, the young people, and it breaks my heart. And uh, I want to get these people saved, man, because um, someone did a solid, um, you know, to um, my grandfather to bring him here to the U.S. Yeah. Uh, my, and he was escaping uh, Kim Il-sung, who killed 200,000 Christians in North Korea. And it was mm -hmm. about to kill my great, my grandfather, who came out as a farmer. So, um, and then a, an American saved him. So, you know, uh, you know, I want, I, I want to be, I want to be turned that. Wow. Amen. Well, you guys make sure you go connect with Tim online. Obviously he bleeds evangelism. This is in his soul. This is in his DNA. So Tim, thank you for what you're doing to do your part and to reach people. And I have no doubt that your faithfulness will be rewarded before the Lord. And so you guys who are listening, make sure to keep your eyes peeled for the firing squad coming out August 2nd in theaters around the U S go watch it, share it on social media, help Mr. Tim Che reach the mission that God has put in his heart of saving a thousand or saving a million souls and go to his website, a million souls.org. Also go check out his YouTube channel on YouTube where you can see some of his other films. Make sure you guys are subscribed to Java with Jen. So you don't miss any upcoming episodes. I've got Sean Bowles coming up in uh, upcoming weeks. And so you guys don't want to miss him and just Sounds lots of great. good stuff coming at you. So you guys have a great week. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show. Listen, let's stay connected. Come follow me on Instagram at Java with Jen, where you can follow the latest and say, hey, it's a really great way to stay in touch. Many of you have also asked how you can support the show. You can make donations through the Anchor app or on Patreon, or of course, by sharing, rating, and reviewing on social media and iTunes as well. Your heartfelt feedback always reminds me why I do this. Also, don't miss our merch store where you can get super cool Java with Jen swag and coffee. Find it at javawithjenmerch.com. Until next time, remember, hearing God's voice is simple and he wants to be a part of your everyday life. See you next week.